the main suspect in the deadly church shooting in Charleston has made his first court appearance via teleconference. 21-year-old Dylan Roof was charged with nine counts of murder and with firearm possession, all of which he has already confessed to. South Carolina authorities say they will seek the death penalty should the court find him guilty. The killings happened during a Bible study session at an African-American church in Charleston. The shooter is reported to have sat at the meeting for a full hour before opening fire on the group. Dylan Roof reportedly supported racial segregation, saying that something needed to be done for the white race. His car bore novelty license plates with flags of the Confederacy, a politically charged emblem representing the states that fought to preserve slavery during the American Civil War. According to Dylan Roof's roommate, he had been planning the massacre for several months. To discuss the massacre, I'm uh, now joined by Brian Becker from the Answer Anti-War Coalition. Mr. Becker, thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to get your reaction to a st statement from President Obama, which he made just about an hour ago. Just let's first take a listen. These tragedies have become far too commonplace. Whether it's a mass shooting like the one in Charleston or individual attacks of violence, it costs this country dearly. More than 11,000 Americans were killed by gun violence in 2013 alone. Obama focused there on gun control issues rather than on race-hate aspects. Uh, why do you think is that? President Obama is engaged, as are all the other American politicians, in an act of deception. Uh, it's not about guns. Um, of course, the American culture has been a, a gun culture. There are more than 300 million people who live in the United States and more than 300 million guns uh, present in, in South Carolina and many other states. Uh, there is more than one gun per home. Uh, it wasn't the fact that guns exist that caused the, ma the terrible massacre in Charleston. It is the rising tide of white supremacy and racism. Uh, President Obama has a, has a, is in a funny position as the first uh, black elected president in, in America, a very historic event. Uh, he recognizes and knows full well that the Republicans and his opposition are using racism as a tool to generate political opposition against Obama, particularly in states like South, South Carolina, which is dominated by the Tea Party. But Obama himself will not say the truth. He will not speak the truth, that there is a rising tide of racism. And he, instead, he covers this up and says, well, there's just too many guns. And then he conflates this incident of extreme racist terrorism, and it is an example of terrorism, white racist terrorism, which is a commonplace, with other gun violence, which has nothing to do with this particular incident. People in the black community and in the progressive community generally don't buy this for one second. Earlier this year in France, we saw a huge show of national solidarity in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo massacre. Why aren't we seeing anything like that in America? Well, that's the $64,000 question. Here you have in Charlie Abdu, 11 people gunned down in an act condemned by all of the world leaders, all of the Western political leaders. They came to Paris. They had a mass march. They denounced terrorism. They called it terrorism. They rounded up Arab and Muslim suspects. But will we say the same thing in Charleston when nine African-American people are slaughtered in an example of white racist terrorism? No, because the American media knows that this, in fact, is a commonplace in the United States, not something exceptional. President Obama and the other politicians say America is an exceptional country. Well, what's exceptional about it is it's exceptionally racist. And of course, they know that this is a commonplace. Why isn't this also defined, as Charlie Abdu was, as an act of condemnation of terrorism? And why aren't all the political leaders marching today or tomorrow in Charleston to use the same measuring stick, the same criteria, but they won't do it? Exactly. That was just what I was about to ask you. Why aren't U.S. officials using the word terrorism right now? Right. They can har some of them can hardly say it's a hate crime. The, the Republican press, the Fox News, the corporate-owned media say, well, maybe it's an attack on Christians, which, of course, is ludicrous. Uh, and President Obama, too, wants to conceal the fact by saying that it's gun violence rather than it's white supremacy. The fact is they know that in America there are 40 million black Americans who are, who are treated like an oppressed, colonized nation who suffer extreme poverty, extreme oppression, 
Uh, mass incarceration at record international levels, 2.3 million people in prison, disproportionately black. And the problem in America right now is the rising tide of right-wing racism and xenophobia. It's haunting Europe, but it's really right here in the United States, and the politicians are covering it up. Mr. Becker, thank you very much for your comments. This was uh, Brian Becker from the Answer Anti-War Coalition. Thank you.